this latest discovery will give them plenty to talk about back at Salt Fork Lodge. You know, one of the best things about a Bigfoot conference slash expo is the buffet. They really seem to lay it on. If you look here, I've got my uh, Bigfoot ribs, slice of Sasquatch chicken, mashed potato, and of course my corn, so. My buddy and I were out there. We're just camping out, having a good time. Uh, we were shooting guns. You want to elaborate on that? The two of you just having a good time? Just, just me and another friend. Okay, above board stuff. We're just camping out, just enjoying ourselves in the middle of the woods. And it's just now getting dark in the woods. And all of a sudden, I hear this branch just like, <laughs> just be snapped, like something would brute force snap the branch. And all of a sudden, we heard this. It sounded like you'd either picked up a 300 pound boulder or an old rotten tree log and just slammed it on the earth, just okay. bam! Like saying, get out of my woods. Yep. And about a quarter to one in the morning, I was doing a flash, and I'd say from here to that guy back there against the wall. The guy, the, buff, the buffet guy? The guy, yeah, buffet guy about that far back there. And about that time, I ran over to my, my, my buddy Greg. I said, Greg, wake up, there's something in the woods. I'm scared, wake up, there's something in the woods. And he sits up, boom, he passes back out. And now my heart starts beating a little bit. I'm like, had Man. Greg been drinking, had he, a little bit? Huh? Had Greg been drinking a bit? Greg drank all night. Okay. But he passed out. That's why he couldn't wake up. Okay. I had a couple of drinks, but I was done drinking at 7 p.m. that night. Okay. Well, they closed the park for a month back, oh, six, seven years ago. They were having maybe in the month of August 25, 30 sightings. So they closed the park because they didn't want a whole bunch of redneck hunters coming in here try, with rifles trying to shoot it. One of the many researchers who takes a more scientific approach to the study of Bigfoot is Diane Stocking. I'm pretty much no-nonsense person. Today I'm going to talk about basically critical thinking and analysis of what is real and what is not real out in the field. Have you always had that, that sort of uh, approach to things? Always. It's a pet peeve of mine that so many people out there, including researchers that have been doing this for so long, that every sound is a Bigfoot. Yeah. But everything is Bigfoot, and it's not, and it, 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 it's irritating. I am of the opinion from the evidence I have collected and the witnesses I've talked to that they do exist. It's from studying the evidence. Okay. I've determined to myself that, yes, the, they are out there. Yes, even though I haven't seen one yet. Now you have ink on your mouth. That's fine. I'll okay. <laughs> okay, you're making a total mess of yourself. Is that? Is that? Why don't you use a napkin? Oh, that's fine. I'm just going to make it worse. I mean, I'll, I'll, you just go on. The... Okay. I quit the BFRO back in 2001. I have my own my own nonprofit organization now. And that's called the the Stocking Hominid Research. But, but how about the different organizations? The BFO, the BFRO. Um, do they work in, in together, or are they working apart? Basically, we, it depends on the organization you're talking about. There are a few that we do work well together, and because that it's, it, it's who is, is in the organization. Yeah, yeah we, but, don't, um, we just want to find out what's going on. You've got your, the Ohio Bigfoot organization, you're on the Eastern Ohio Bigfoot organization, of course, the Virginia Bigfoot organization, the USAF, the... Yeah, there's the, uh, there's the MABRC. Of course, the BFRO, the uh, Willow Creek... And Bigfoot. there's the ABS, there, there are so many... The ABS ones. is the... The American Bigfoot Society. Okay. Yeah. The Cincinnati Bigfoot Organization, of course. Minnesota Bigfoot Research Team, the MNBRT. And Columbus, Ohio Bigfoot Unit. What does the, the word EGO spell? That's the answer to all that. There's so many of them that have cropped up since like the mid or late 90s, since the advent of the internet. I'm um, dying. How has the internet affected um, Bigfoot research? I mean, good in a way because we can get information that much quicker, but it's also brought in a lot more hoaxing and you know, people just throwing stuff into databases yep. that aren't true. So, yep. you know, it's, it, it's a plus and minus either way. And how would you like to see um, Bigfoot, Bigfoot research going forward? Any changes? Well, naturally, a more scientific approach. If people would stop worrying about the fringe and would stop worrying about the trying to keep it a, the mystery and trying to add more questions to, um, instead of trying to find more answers. Thanks, Diane. I'm not shaking your hand. No. <laughs> As one of the keynote speakers, Lee shares one of New Zealand's most controversial Sasquatch encounters with the Bigfoot Conference. Richard Tompkins made his way into the Waitaki Ranges uh, on the 14th of July, um, 2001. He, he went in there, he was doing some research, taking some samples, setting up some night vision cameras. Then, 
out of nowhere from behind, a large upright walking hominid threw him to the ground, ripped his jeans off and raped him. Okay, he later found his jeans torn up to shreds in the manner that no human could do um, a couple of miles from the, from the, where the rape scene. A number of years later, he was up there once again and again he was raped by the same beast, we believe. He was raped not once, not twice, but thrice over a four year period. And I think this is important um, to remember that this beast we're dealing with is not such a shy hominid as the one we have come to know in here as Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Skunk Ape or Grass Ape. Coming up, the mysterious Planet Labs get DNA results on the fur. Lee must present his findings. We see never before seen footage of Bigfoot and the legendary Patterson footage. Can it be recreated? For decades, the search for Bigfoot has mainly taken place out in the field, but now science is lending a hand and thanks to advances in motion technology programs, much of it is now being done in the comfort of labs or online. But the eyewitness accounts are still hard to ignore. My husband and I, we were driving out February 9th, um, just on a leisurely day out, and he's looking and he ran off the road looking at this creature. And what did you see? Tell me what you saw. What did you see? And he said, well, okay, I saw it. I saw it. I, he says it looked like a large man hugging a tree. It was trying to hide behind a tree. It had its arms wrapped around a tree like it was trying to blend in to the forest. Five nights in a row, there were footprints at the water where we were, where they were making concrete. They and were making concrete. They were making concrete. The Bigfoots were. The, the people. Oh, sorry. The, okay. There was a. It was a building construction site. Okay. okay. It had a, a cone-shaped head, but it had a receding hairline. I mean, it was losing its hair up here. The the movement was was it was like it was gliding across, almost like a cross-country skier, much like the Patterson Gimlin film. I saw this massive arm. This huge arm, and as I passed it, I saw these muscles working in the back. That was an albino-colored uh, Sasquatch, or perhaps a d light gray. And so, two completely different stories there, yet remarkably similar at the same time. I oh, will cut. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably cut it there. I think, wouldn't we? We'd just normally just whack it right out of there. I think that would be where we'd cut, chop that, wouldn't it? Yep. Okay. As we've shown, these stories of sightings and indeed attacks are not unique to the United States. Take Brad Majors, for example. He claims he was attacked by the Waitakere beast in 1997. He tells the story in his own words. It's out of nowhere, it came. And he chased you, didn't he, Barry? He did chase me. He just he ran straight up through the bushes and to cut me off. And I was just flying straight up the track, running as fast as I can, and then he just launched me. So what, what was actually in the pack then? What, what did you lose? I had uh, my mini disc player, I had um, um, about 300 CDs, I had uh, um, my snowboarding goggles, and they were probably about 300, they were the latest Oakleys. Um, I had uh, my Nikon camera in there. Although many people feel that Brad's story reads more like an insurance scam, there are many experts that believe him. travels to Rome to interview Dr. Jerry Garcia Manson of the Bigfoot UFO and Submersible Dinosaur Institute. He has the largest feces analysis machine in the world and should be able to shed light on some of these findings. Unfortunately, Dr. Jerry is attending an alien abduction conference in Tokyo, but Lee is able to catch the next plane back to the United States.